Hi, and welcome back. Some of you may have seen my recent video for the Fab Filter channel titled Sample Rates, The Higher the Better Light. I'll pop up a card and put a link below in case you haven't yet. This has prompted quite a lot of comment and discussion, and there's a few comments that tell us something quite profound. Here's one. Five minutes, 50 seconds. I was able to hear that 25 kilohertz one very, very slightly. I've obscured the name and image because I don't want to single him out. He wasn't alone. I think even my iPhone speakers are reproducing frequencies above 20 kilohertz. When the 25 kilohertz test tone was played, I couldn't hear anything, needless to say, but felt pressure on my eardrums exactly when you played the tone and each time I replayed that moment in the video. Is this possible? Now, some of you may have spotted the problem already. Here's the audio stream from the video. And the sample rate is 44.1 kHz. Now, I had to change sample rate many times while making that video, and all my examples were at different sample rates to begin with. But I converted them all offline using the Isotope 64-bit algorithm in SoundForge, in case you're curious. So they all ended up at the same sample rate. Last time I tested YouTube, my 48 kHz audio was converted to 44.1. So I routinely convert to 44.1 anyway when making YouTube videos. Half of 44.1 is 22.05, which obviously is lower than the 25 kHz tone my viewers claimed they could hear. Exactly 2.95 kHz lower, in fact. So we can probably assume that they were not, in fact, hearing a 25k test tone. So what were they hearing? Well, if my sample rate conversion had failed to properly filter out that 25 kilohertz tone, it would have reflected down as aliasing. As it's 2.95k higher than Nyquist, the alias reflection would be 2.95k lower than Nyquist, which works out as 19.1 kilohertz. It's actually quite possible that a young and fresh pair of ears could in fact just about hear a 19 kHz tone that my old fart ears were oblivious to. So let's stop speculating and check what's actually happened instead. Here's the relevant section from the video, even though we can't hear it. And there's a nice little gap after that sentence, which I've looped. I can't see anything in the waveform. Now I can clearly see the lower tone come in at the same amplitude. Let's zoom the waveform display. Still no sign of a sine wave, if you'll forgive the pun. Let's boost the gain by quite a lot, like 60 dB. I can hear the dither noise now. Still can't hear anything else. Final check. Let's load up a spectrum analyzer. The one in Pro-Q3 will do, and I've got that plug in on a hotkey. And actually, there is some stuff going on at around 19 kilohertz. It doesn't look at all like a pure tone at 19.1, which is what I would expect an aliased 25k tone to look like. But maybe there's something else going on. Or on the other hand, maybe this is just dither noise, shaped to put most of the energy up where we can't hear it. So, to settle the argument properly, let's pull up the original project. Here we have the audio as I recorded it while capturing the video, at 32-bit float resolution with no dither. And in fact, I have two takes stacked up in this clip. Take 1 is the one I recorded at 96 kHz, while take 2 is the same thing but converted to 44.1 kHz in SoundForge. It's quite easy to see that the 25k tone in the higher sample rate file is simply not there in the lower sample rate file. But let's double check with an analyzer again. There really is nothing there. We were indeed just seeing dither noise earlier. So the profound lesson we learned from this is about the power of suggestion. Just as our sense of smell affects the way we taste our food, our ability to see affects the way we hear music. The subtle differences that people debate for hours on internet forums are dwarfed by the differences in what you notice the second time you listen to a mix, even when you know that nothing has changed. When you know that something has changed, all those differences that are really just in your head will be perceived as the result of that change. You can't help it. Everyone does it. It's just the way our brains work. 
So next time you hear someone swear they can hear the improvement when they switch to 96 or 192 kilohertz, remember the people that swore they could hear a 25 kilohertz tone that definitely wasn't there. You are entitled to remain sceptical unless they can back it up in a proper blind test. But before I go, let's try something else. I'm going to switch to take 1, which is at 96 kHz. But my project is still set to 44.1 kHz, so the clip now displays a little warning so we know it's being sample rate converted on the fly. I still can't see anything on the analyzer. But if I pop up the project settings, notice that the playback resample mode is set to the highest extreme setting. So I'll try switching to the medium 64-point sync setting instead, which is strangely at the other end of the list, even though it's not the lowest possible setting. And this looks suspiciously like an aliased tone at 19.1 kHz. And it's alarmingly high in level as well. So let's not laugh at our friends who thought they heard this tone. They could have been correct, if they have good hearing, and if I had used mediocre sample rate conversion. Just for fun, let's try going further. I'll switch to linear interpolation. And that's not very good, is it? But that's not even the worst. Check out the lowest point sampling type. This one might actually be audible on an iPhone speaker. So the second lesson is, sample rate conversion quality matters. But if you're a Reaper user, don't panic. The highest quality settings do actually seem to work very well. And I suspect I wouldn't be able to tell them apart from my usual isotope algorithm in a blind test. I continue to use the isotope algorithm because when I see the brand name, I perceive it as sounding better. Even though I know perfectly well, this is probably just cognitive bias. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.